Hi everybody! Here's something that I thought would be fun to do. Um, this is a copy of the Sierra Adventure game Pepper's Adventures in Time from 1993. This is a copy of the game that I acquired recently and uh, it was published on floppy disk and this is part of the Sierra Discovery series. The Sierra Discovery series was from the early 1990s and it was approximately 12 games. Um, which included the Dr. Brain Trilogy, Pepper's Adventures in Time, EcoQuest 1 and 2, uh, Quarky and Quasu's Turbo Science, um, a game about uh, spelling, and some other ones I don't remember right now. But except for uh, the top left corner there on a couple of the manuals and inserts, and on the white box here, um, this copy that I acquired of the game uh, was completely pristine. It's got the original registration card there and, and everything. And the game discs themselves were completely legible. Every byte um, was completely legible. So uh, the first thing that I did was I imaged the discs. And I happened to image the discs on the exact uh, 30th anniversary of the day that they were written, which is Groundhog Day 1993. That's uh, February 2nd, in case uh, you're in a country that doesn't celebrate Groundhog Day, which I suppose is every country except the United States. <laughs> as far as I know, that's in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania. That's the origin of that. Anyway, so um, what I thought I would do today is we're not going to play the game, but what I thought would be fun to do would be to install the game. And what I've got here is DOSBox pulled up. And um, I have uh, mounted drive C as uh, directory on the E drive. The E drive right now is a USB stick drive um, which has the game files on it um, sort of as a backup but I've also on another USB port got a three and a half inch floppy disk drive connected to USB. Um, this is not a vintage drive this is a modern uh, floppy, uh, floppy USB drive and I'm not going to use the original game disks I'm going to use the backups that I made from the image files that I made from the original game discs. So, um, so what I've got here is DOSBox pulled up and I have a USB stick drive um, plugged into my Windows 10 computer and I uh, have that as drive E and I've mounted that as drive C. A directory in it uh, which contains uh, actually a copy of the uh, game files from the discs. So if we do a DIR on drive C uh, we have disk 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and if we go into disk 1 for example do a DIR there we see the files that are in that including setup.exe and install.bat and uh, similarly for disks uh, 2, 3, 4, 4, and 5. Um, if we go into the copy run directory, that's short for copy and run, meaning the game has already been, uh, meaning the game files have already been put into there. Um, actually, that's not uh, populated. <laughs> right. Uh, because what I want to do now, I think, is I want to, um, oh no, I, that's actually something about the uh, installation programs of that day, uh, is that there was no option to install on any other drive other than C, on any other letter drive. Um, but what, I, what I've got here is a, um, in another USB port on my Windows 10 computer, I've got a USB three and a half inch floppy drive. And so I've put uh, the backup disks, I'm going to put the backup disks 
into this floppy drive. You can possibly hear it there. There's disk one. And um, these are the backup disks I made from the image files that I made from the original game disks that came in the box. My box. So uh, if I switch to drive A, oh, of course, I have to mount drive A first. Because it's DOSBox. And now if I do A colon and a DIR, okay, we find that the same files are there. Um, now this was a 1993 installation program and it this, uh, as you can see here, the directories say DOS only, Win only, and both. And as you saw from the sticker on the front cover of the game box, it runs in both DOS and Windows, but the it appears that um, um, the installation program might not simply copy files. It might actually copy specific files to specific places, not just all in the game directory. So, um, <clears throat> anyway, what we will do here, first let's uh, type install that bat. Okay, so that goes into CD DOS only and runs install from there. Okay, and the setup.exe, that must be from Windows, for Windows, because I remember that that's um, usually the program that you would run for any program to be installed in Windows. And there's also a Sierra.bmp. Um, not sure what that is. I hope it's a bitmap file, but I'm not certain. So anyway, let's run install.bat. And now, um, looking back on vintage computing here, now I'm always specifying the extension of an executable file, unless it's a DOS command, uh, because uh, there's a big difference between running install.exe and install.bat, if there is one, especially in the Sierra files and stuff especially once you've installed them and whatever. Um, and if you run just install and there's an install.bat and install.com and install.exe, which are the three types of executable files in DOS, then it would run whichever one came first in alphabetical order. Um, so if you had one of each, uh, bat for batch file, com for command, or exe for executable, and if you had all three of those as uh, extensions for different files, it would run the, the BAT first. Which actually means I don't have to specify this, but whatever. So this is something that really nobody shows on YouTube. Um, again, I'm doing this with DOSBox. I'm not doing this on a vintage computer, but I am using... Um, uh, copies of the original game discs, my backup copies I've made. <clears throat> and we're going to see the lovely Sierra installation program, which is something that you don't get. get. Um, you know, every, these days everybody's about uh, DOSBox and ScumVM and emulating uh, both DOS and um, other, you know, other computers such as uh, TRS-80s and uh, Apple IIs, etc. And that's wonderful because it means that you can still play the games. But there's a certain part of the experience of the games of that day where the installation and the box and the things in the box were the part of the experience. So this is Sierra Online Game Install slash Setup Program 5 point uh, correction 3.580. Copyright 1991 to 93 Sierra Online Incorporated, all rights reserved. And as I said before, uh, Pepper's Adventures in Time was released in 1993. This program will let you specify what type of hardware is installed on your, in your machine. You must run it once before playing your Sierra game. You may want to run it again if you add new hardware to your system, system or if you are having programs with your first selections. Yep. Especially memory. Memory was the 
big crux of games from this era. Oh, I take that back. So they did let you uh, choose the directory, uh, choose the uh, drive letter. I'm sorry. I definitely got that wrong. Please type the letter of the hard disk to which you want to install this game or press EX uh, escape to, scan to cancel installation. Press C. Okay. Okay, so here's what uh, the installation program sensed from what DOSBox is presenting to it. Um, graphics, VGA or IBM PS2, 256 colors. Yes, that's what we want. Music, Roland MT32, MT100, LAPC1, CM32L or CM64. Uh, let's go into the graphics options here. Okay, so we're supporting all three options, and I oh, you can play it in grayscale. How about that? Well, that would be interesting. Uh, and it also supports 16 colors. That's good to know. Um, yeah, and the sticker on the box that gives the specs says VGA and EGA. But we're going to do the uh, full flush, 256 colors. And let's see what the music selections are that are available. Roland MT32, General MIDI Sound Driver, Pro Audio Spectrum Sound Blaster AdLib or Compatibles. This was um, what we always had. Um, um, occasionally, you, well, almost everybody that I think uh, had either a Sound Blaster or an AdLib card. And to my ear, they sounded identical now that I've tried an actual AdLib card. Uh, in person now. Um, I don't hear a difference, but I'm not a musician either. I don't have a trained ear for music. And of course, the IBM <laughs> PC or compatible internal speaker. Um, occasionally, you would see other options as well, such as uh, the Disney sound source. And um, But I think what I'm going to do right now is um, Roland MT32. Before running your game, be sure to, one, make sure the module is connected and an external amplifier. Actually, now... Wow, this is a lot. Okay, this is more technical than I expected. I expected it to just plug and play. Silly me. I should know better <laughs> for vintage games. I'm going to do the Sound Blaster ad lib card. Um, DOS box comes up with some default settings for the Sound Blaster emulation and um, and I'm confident that it will it will support that um, joystick uh, we I'm gonna hmm don't, don't use a joystick um, there I believe DOSBox definitely does support joysticks. I would be su super surprised if it does not, but I don't have one plugged in. Neither a, a DB15 or, nor a um, USB joystick. Or a USB gamepad, even. Um, mouse, use the Microsoft compatible mouse. Memory, use your machine's extra memory. On a modern computer, thankfully, there should be no problem with not having enough memory <laughs> for a game that was made 30 years ago. But this was a huge problem, as I recall, in our experience in our house. Uh, the most notorious one was the Dagger of Amun-Ra. Uh, my dad got that running once properly, as in one particular setup. Every time we wanted to... Uh, play a game or you know, we had to install it and then in for the later games at least we had to configure the memory my dad had to figure out how to configure the memory so it had enough to load the sound drivers for the sound blaster load the mouse drivers so that we could use the mouse and run the game that was the minimum of course and even though we had as far as i know no problem with uh, not having enough memory there was a problem with configuring that memory properly. That's something that I have not mastered yet to this date. Um, 
and so uh, I remember one occasion where he got the dagger of Amun Ra working, and uh, I, as I recall, I think he made yes, he made a boot up menu. Um, I assume that it was in uh, autoexec.bat. He made a boot up menu, or it might have been config.sys. I actually don't know, but he made a boot up menu in DOS, so that when you booted up the computer, it asked you. It asked you um, what you wanted to do. Just go into DOS like normal or play a particular game by name. And um, after we, I guess, got our next computer or something, we, we were never able to get the Dagger of Amon Ra to work properly again. Um, thankfully, I don't think that's a problem nowadays. And the directory, of course, C colon backslash Sierra backslash Pepper. You can also have the program make a have the installation program make a bootable floppy disk, um, which was very helpful because then you did not know you did not have to know how to make a boot menu <laughs> in your config.sys and autoexec.bat. Um, restore Sierra default choices, inst uh, cancel installation, and return to DOS. And of course, what we want to do is accept these choices and begin installation. To use extended memory, you must make sure you have no other memory resonant programs loaded that use extended memory, such as RAM disks or disk caches. If your computer is a Tandy RLX 1000, don't use this option. To use expanded memory, use your, uh, to use expanded memory, your EMS driver software must be loaded before you start the, dry, start the game. To use XMS memory, your XMS driver must be loaded before you start the game. Note, not all machines support our use of extended memory. If your computer locks up or otherwise exhibits undesirable behavior while playing the game, try reinstalling without selecting this option. Now, I don't actually know why the Sierra installation program gives you the option of using the extra memory. Extra memory. Um... I suppose the explanation might be pretty elementary, but um, I, I suppose that refers to where it loads the mem, where into your computer's memory it loads the game when it runs it. And that <clears throat> I don't think that the uh, Sierra installation programs ever edited your autoexec.bat and config.sys files. Um, the Sound Blaster installation files, in, the Sound Blaster installation disks actually did that to configure so that uh, the right things were set up when you when your computer booted. But uh, for the Sierra games like this one, they were dependent on that already being set, and you had to um, tell the game where to go in memory. So uh, anyway. Enter to confirm. And uh, this is not genuinely, it just uh, wrote all those files there. And apparently, the uh, USB floppy drive had already read all those files into the Windows 10 computer's memory. So it now you can see it's going single file by single file. So this is what the installation process would be. I also have a setup uh, in the works where I can use one of my vintage vintage computers and split the VGA output from it into both. Uh, oh, okay. That beep there was supposed to be a sound from the PC speaker. That's what it would be on a vintage computer. Pepper two. That's what I've labeled it. Uh, not to be confused with the ColecoVision game, Pepper 2, which was sort of a Pac-Man clone, except you were, instead of eating dots, you were zipping zippers. Huh. Um, I am working on a setup where I can use a vintage computer, such as a 386, and take its VGA output and split it. 
and one of those branches of the split will go into the monitor that I will look at, and the other branch will go into a converter, which will convert it into a USB camera input, which will go into my modern computer. And that way, I can use my modern, my modern computer to record myself playing the game on a vintage computer. Now this is actually going pretty quickly. Um, I don't know if it would be going this fast on, say, the 386. I don't know what the read-write baud rates are on uh, three and a half inch floppy disks. It's even interesting for me to use the word baud in relation to that because it is a transfer of data of bytes. Um, I just never until recently used the word baud for anything other than modems. until I learned, oh, well, it really applies to everything. Reading and writing to the memory, reading and writing to the hard drive, reading, reading and writing to floppy disks, um, modem connections, null modem transfers, um, and probably network connections, too. Although I haven't done any networking yet. At least not with vintage computers. But that's in the works, too. So if you had a game that was a lot of discs, for example, I think King's Quest V had eight floppy disks. And if you were running that on, say, a, um, an 8088 computer or IBM PC or XT, such as we were... Sorry, I don't know that then the installation program might take uh, a few minutes. Here we are, disk 5 of 5. And so that would be a, gr a great time, though, to look through the box and see what was in there, see what was in the manuals. Um, read through the catalog, paper catalog, see what other games the... You know, you might be able to look forward to if you were asked to ask for them for Christmas or your birthday. Or even if you were the kind of kid who was earning money by doing chores or for your in your own house or neighbors, um, maybe even buying it yourself. Please wait, decompressing audio. This should take a few minutes. Now, here's a puzzling moment to me. I have DOSBox set at 3,000 cycles. I don't know how long this is supposed to take. I did install the game successfully on my 386, my genuine vintage computer, and uh, it did take, say, a minute, uh, maybe more, for this part of it. It's reading the floppy disk again. And it's reading again. Okay, so I guess it's reading the compressed audio in stages. It's a little unnerving, though, because there's no progress bar here. Um, even in, in uh, an ASCII interface like this, you could easily put a progress bar, uh, like, the, like the periods and the ellipses were when we started the batch file. EcoQuest 1 is the only one of the um, Sierra Discovery series games that I know of that uh, has full voice, which is actually a real shame. Um, the um, And I've seen uh, a little bit of that game played, so I'm looking forward to playing that one too. But it's really a shame that once Sierra finally got the ability for full voice acting, um, the Discovery series was kind of neglected then. So let's see, the Sierra Discovery series, um, there was a uh, counting game, a spelling game. Oh, there was also Mother Goose. 
There was a uh, mixed up mother goose and mixed up fairy tales. Um, mixed up fairy tales, as far as I know, only had one edition of it. Uh, that is, it was never remade. Um, and that one, that one was actually written by Lori Cole, uh, who is the creator or co-creator of the Quest for Glory series, along with her husband, Corey. And um, <clears throat> so the, um, the quest giver character in that game happens to be a dragon. Um, and then there was also um, Mixed Up Mother Goose. And the Mixed Up Mother Goose I've read uh, was... Oh, here we are. Uh, Mixed Up Mother Goose I've read was actually remade not just once, but twice. Um, once in the AGI engine and once in the SCI Zero engine, and then again in SVGA or Super VGA. Um, that's another one that I've never read, uh, never uh, played either. Um, interesting thing about um, about um, Mix Up Fairy Tales, before I move on. Mix Up Fairy Tales, I remember Lori and Corey were saying that um, recently that when they made Quest for Glory 1, at the time called Hero's Quest, they actually wanted you, the player, to have the option of playing either a male character or a female character. But there was a just a limitation at that time in how much space that would have taken up on the discs. On each one of the floppy disks, there is certain information that has to be duplicated in each one of the resource files. Some of that information is all of the character sprites, and all of the character animation frames. And that means that if they had had a male and a female character, they would have doubled that. And they were already running very high for just walk, run, and sneak. Because all those uh, modes of walking have um, different animations. And then you, of course, have also the uh, four or eight different directions that the character could travel in as well so it was really complex for the time anyway so here we are to play pepper's adventures in time now type pepper and hit enter to play later from the directory of c sierra pepper type pepper enter and press any key to continue if you have not sent in your sierra warranty registration card please take a moment now to fill it out and mail it if you live in the continental usa or canada you will receive a free three-issue subscription to Interaction, the quarterly Sierra News Magazine, which contains valuable coupons, contests, great articles, upgrade information, hints on playing Sierra games, handy techniques for using our products, and much more. Um, I remember that fondly. I remember getting the Interaction magazines in the mail, uh, just like 3 to one Contact, and just like Nintendo Power. Um... And uh, I guess, uh, the, well, the 3 to 1 contact was also interesting because they included basic programs, programs that you could type out, type in to your computer. But I remember, um, that's probably where I heard about uh, Pepper's Adventures in Time, is from Interaction Magazine, come to think of it. Either that or one of the inbox uh, catalogs. Please be sure to keep all of the documentation included in your game package. These documents contain information about installing and running the program, instructions for obtaining technical assistance, and clues, hints, maps, or other potentially significant information. Remember, we wouldn't have put it all in the box if we didn't think it was important. Now this is kind of interesting here in this um, here, I remember I, in 10th grade, I had uh, my English teacher who instructed us that after the punctuation mark that would end a sentence, you had to put two spaces, not just one. Um, in Britain, for example, if you abbreviate Mr. or Doctor or Miss, it's just DR space and no period. In the United States, in, in American English, it's DR period space Smith, for example. And uh, here they're following my 10th um, grade English teacher's instructions here, <laughs> because after the period there, um, 
and including the uh, colon there after remember in the second paragraph. They've got two spaces. Press the key to continue. Are we done? Oh, exiting install. We weren't done then, but it looks like we are now. Okay, and it uh, puts us into C Sierra Pepper. And now if we do a DIR, we get uh, this directory here. Now, as I said, I did the um, DOS installation, I realize now. Um, so if we do a dir.bat, we have pepper.bat and sierra.bat. Type pepper.bat. And it takes us into this directory and it runs sierra. But uh, there's a sierra.bat and sierra.exe. I think the batch file is the one that would be run um, instead of the exe type sierra dot bat sierra okay <laughs> which then would run sierra dot exe this kind of this kind of uh, uh, programming for lack of a better term always confused me um, how it would how the installation programs would put the um, files in the Sierra directory and the Sierra game directory, in this case, Pepper. Um, it, it seems like it was uh, more complication than was needed because it's not actually part of the game. It just, at best, is going to run the executable with certain parameters, which it doesn't even do here because uh, there are no parameters then. In the batch file. Um, how about dir star.com? There are no command files, no com files. dir star.exe. We have install, which we already ran and we don't want to run again, and sierra.exe. Okay, well, let's run pepper.bat. Let's meet pepper. All right, so the game works, and we've got the full sound card support for the Sound Blaster. Well, thank you very much, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, like I said, this is not an experience that many people go through on YouTube, <laughs> put up on YouTube. Um, so this was fun, and I'm actually really happy that it, it worked in DOSBox. Um, cool. See you later. <laughs>